You're watching Hayes' TV and we're out here in Hanover for CBIT 2010. We've come over to the Corsair stand and with me is Gareth Ogden from Corsair. Gareth, welcome to Hayes' TV. Hi, nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Um, so he's got a whole range of stuff here on the table. Um, most, I think, unusual for Corsair is going to be these air coolers here. So do you just want to talk us through what these are and what they're about? Okay, so, so we uh, launched into the cooling market uh, a little while ago with the uh, H50. Yep. Uh, which is very successful. So, so what we're doing now is we're sort of expanding out our range of cooling products into air coolers. So what we've got here uh, is the new uh, A70 and A50 air coolers. So this one is um, uh, an eight heat pipe with two fans and this one is six heat pipe. No, sorry, I'm lying. This is four heat pipe and this one's three heat pipe, isn't it? Because yeah. they're in U-shape. Yeah, and uh, as, as one of the features is the, um, the heat pipes directly contact the heat spreader of the CPU. So the heat, the heat from the CPU goes straight into the heat pipes. And obviously with the, with the uh, A70, you've got two fans for push-pull. And um, with, with, the, with the A70, you're probably looking you know, pretty close to or even better in some cases than, uh, than the H50. So really high performance for overclocking. And also low noise, we've got rubber mounts on our, all the fans to uh, dampen vibrations. A A50 is a similar design, but as you say, three heat pipes, again, direct connect heat pipes. Yep. Uh, only the one fan, but it's the same same rubber mounts on it to reduce vibration. So, so with this, it's, it's really this is kind of your your first upgrade from your standard Intel or AMD heat sink. So, reduce your CPU temperatures, give you a bit of overclocking flexibility, uh, quieter obviously as well. Okay, I've got to ask though, and uh, I'm sure people watching this are thinking this: Why air coolers? Everybody's doing air coolers. There's, you know, you're you're entering a very sort of like you know competitive market there. Uh, well, we, we, we've demonstrated with the H50 that, that we, we, uh, we can be a serious player in the cooling market and, and air coolers was the, the obvious next step from, from the H50, which was a, you know, technically a liquid cooler, but really also aimed at the HSF market. Oh. And, uh, and this, is, this is where you know, the, the majority of, um, of, of you know, cooling product sales are in, in the air cooling market. So uh, you know, ex expanding what we've learned with the H50 and with, you know, with, the, with the cooling products and bringing that into a, into a sort of wider market, if you like. But okay. We think, you know, we think we think that we're, you know, we've proven that we can do it well with H50, and I think uh, these will show that we can compete pretty successfully in the uh, air cooler market as well. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I, I do, I do, I do hope it's a success because I like the brand. I'll be honest, I do like the brand. <laughs> so let's tell us about uh, a few other things that we've got on the table here. Um, what's this uh, USB stick with lots of little things going on? What's that? Okay, so this is Padlock Two. Yeah. Uh, you may remember a few years ago we had Padlock One. Yeah, I've uh, got one which doesn't do anything because I forgot what was going on with it. <laughs> So this, this is the same, the same idea really, but just, just more secure and more in keeping with the look of, uh, of, the, of the Voyager series, the, you know, the rubberized shell, yeah. uh, you know, for, for shock protection. It's got the little nipple on the end there. It does. Uh, and the same, same idea as Padlock 1 is in that it's, a, a, it's supposed to be easy to use. So again, a pin entry system, up to 10 digit pin. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the key difference with Padlock 2 is that it's uh, hardware secure. So it's AES 256-bit encryption, hardware encryption on the flash. So when you uh, when you lock this drive, you know that's it. Sorry, what's what is that? I, that just went tight over my head. Encryption, you know, a bit like when you log into a secure website, uh, right. you know, to, to enter your payment details, it'll be encrypted. Um, one one of those forms could be yeah. AES 256-bit. It just it just means that that uh, if somebody did steal the drive and then tried to you know directly get the information off the flash. They would be able to. Okay, no, 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 no sorry, no, I'll get the, get the encryption bit. I mean, the hard, the hardware side of things, so so that's all running in the hardware. There's no actual oh, software yeah, running no, the encryption. No, no software needed, no. So this is totally platform independent. Uh, it, the, the, the pin unlocks the drive. Yeah. All that's done in hardware with a chip on the drive. Okay, okay, and then you plug it into Mac, PC, Linux, whatever, and it'll work. Right, no okay. software at all. Um, and, then, and, and sticking with um, flash drives, we've got, uh, what's this, this, this baby here, the Voyager GTR. Tell us a bit about that. Is that, is that kind of like... The, the halfway house between that and the super fat 128 gig big boy. Well, this is part of the same range. So we, we launched um, uh, the 128 gig GTR, uh, which was an, you know, uh, an evolution of the GT. So, so this is just bringing, that's 128 gigs. So we're bring, bringing that same performance down into lower capacity. So this yep. is the 64, there's a 32 as well. So it's the same technology. So the quad channel, dual controller quad channel designs. So up to about 34 megabyte second read, 28 megabyte second write. It's maximum speed, it's USB 2, yeah. it's just pretty much saturating USB 2. Uh, but USB 2 is still what everybody has, again, cross platform, yeah. you know, it's the ubiquitous standard, so, um, so USB 2 is still, is still the, the sort of format to have. Okay, and when's that hitting the market or is it out now? Uh, these now, we didn't, we're not actually announced these today. 
Uh, so these should be available now, 32, 64 and 128. The 120 is a slightly different form factor. Yeah, and uh, what's the rough pricing on those? Because I, I, know, I know the 128 is just a lot, isn't it? Uh, you, you're asking me, I don't know. <laughs> no, fair enough, fair enough. That's fine, that's fine. That's fine, that's fine. Until, until they hit the stores, then I couldn't give you a, I couldn't give you a guesstimate. Yeah, until everyone's taking their piece out of it. Okay, and then lastly, you've got a couple of SSDs here for us. So, so do you want to just talk us through those? Uh, yeah, so these were announced, again, fairly recently, two, two, uh, two new additions to the SSD range. So we've got performance and uh, extreme. Uh, so now we've got Nova series and Reactor series. So Nova okay. is uh, uh, Interlinks barefoot. Uh, controller, right. so they, you know, a, you know, very sort of respected, known uh, controller. Uh, 64 mega cache, trim support out of the box. Yep. Uh, very good performance, up to 270 read, 195 write, and again, Interlink's very good uh, sequen uh, random write performance as well. Yep. Uh, Reactor is uh, is the new J Micron 612 controller, so the updated uh, J Micron controller, 128 mega cache, uh, again, very good uh, random read right performance and um, and trim out of the box. Okay, fantastic. Um, I've got to say though, if I was going to choose between the two, I think I'd go for the Nova because it's 128 rather than 120. Would you? You need that extra eight gig. Well, I don't know. It's just it's just it's, just, it's bigger, isn't it? So do you mind if I have that? Uh, okay. Sweet, lovely. There you go, Stefan. Put it in the back. 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 Can't there we go. This, Can't have that one. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, so, so there we go. Uh, and also, you've got a new case out, the 700D. That's right, isn't it? Uh, we have. Yes, yeah. 700D was again launched recently. It's um, it's, it's, it's based on the 800D, so uh, so what we've kind of done is take, taking the idea of like having a, you know, if you go and buy a new car, buy, buy your luxury BMW, you've got an options package, some things you like, some things you don't. So what we've done with the 700D is, uh, is taken out probably the, the, the two features that uh, uh, are more kind of luxury options that people may choose but may not want. So, uh, so we've taken out the hot swap, uh, drive bays, and the, the side panel window, which again, kind of personal preference features, some people like, some people don't. But by taking those out, uh, we, we can, you know, obviously reduce the cost. So you, so rather than it being a cheaper case, it's, it is the same quality as the Android D, just with a couple of things, you know, that you preferences that you may Optional not want, extras option that you extras, can get and uh, and yeah, and that's uh, you know, they, so you have the same basic features as the Android D, uh, with the cable management, uh, the the multi-zone sort of cooling, support for triple radiators. You know, all that sort of good all, stuff. All, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to have a look at that um, in a little bit more detail in our next show here from uh, CBIT 2010 in Hanover. Check that soon on Hexus TV for more. I can really have that drive. You can, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Go away. <laughs>